Thanks, John. Um, thank you. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, John didn't tell me that this was going to be a podcast, so I'm going to have to make sure I don't say anything too insulting or upsetting throughout the morning. But in any case, uh, I would echo what John said, and uh, we really look forward to the panel session when we get to hear uh, the questions from people. But before that, uh, our three guests uh, are going to each give a short introduction about themselves. We're really lucky to have um, three great people here who, am I speaking too loudly or too? Oh, sorry. Um, we're, really, we're really, really lucky to have three great people who've taken some time off this morning to spend with us from the ICT industry. And I'm going to introduce them in turn um, as they come up and um, one by one. So we're going to start with uh, Dave Clark. Uh, David Clark, um, he's Vice President of Workday and he was also co-founder of Cape Clear. So he brings a lot of experience here today and he told me um, that if you know he gets a bit boring he plays cello, which he actually brought over there as well. So he's obviously a very talented person in many different ways. So David, over to you. Well, trust me, you don't want to hear me playing the cello, so you better like what I have to say. Um, it's kind of like a church in here, actually. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I feel like it's like a dog collar on as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, the funny thing about the ICT space is that having worked in it for like 17 years, I've never actually heard it referred to as that by anyone who actually worked in it. No offence. Um, it's one of those things that it's, nor is it, I think, a, a, a characterization that I've heard outside of Ireland. So it's just a peculiar um, nomenclature that we, we, we're here to use. So, if you are talking about software companies, don't talk about ICT because you're, you're genuinely going to get, get a blank stare. Um, well, anyway, I started my career years back in working for Shell, an evil oil company, and um, I worked there for a couple of years as, as what was called a business analyst. And then when I left, I, I left to join Iona, and there were about 100 people, Iona Technologies, you've probably heard of. And kind of my boss's boss's boss kind of called me in because it was unusual to leave Shell back in the day. And um, he kind of said, I'm just curious, you know. What does a business analyst actually do? <laughs> and of course, having worked there for two years, I didn't know either. So it was kind of a you know, mutual, mutually you know, sort of workable. So just to give a very brief bit of background, and of course, um, I'm first up, and I'm the person from the company you've never heard of. Um, so I guess that's just the, the accidents of alphabetical ordering. And just again, computer scientists tend to make a lot of, I wouldn't call it humor, but a lot of uh, side references about sorting, ordering, algorithms, those kinds of things. <coughs> so. You know, it's good to, good to kind of get comfortable with the, you know, the kind of sequencing of the, the numerics and so forth. But I guess, um, yeah, so I joined Iona like in 1996, and in fact, my colleague Henri, Henri O'Toole, you probably have heard of, was supposed to be here today, but he's, uh, he's stuck off trying to flog some of our software in the UK. Um, so I only probably heard of it was, I guess, you know, one of the first very successful Irish software companies. Um, so uh, I only went public in, I think, 19, 1997 or eight. Um, it was the second biggest, and still is the second biggest software IPO on NASDAQ after Netscape. So, you know, it was a pretty, pretty significant success story. And um, it's kind of essentially come to an end, I guess, latterly. Uh, they were acquired by Progress Software, kind of an evil American corporation. Um, I would emphasize we all work for evil American corporations now. But um, Progress is a particularly evil American software corporation. Um, so the kind of my own story has played its course. But that's one of the things about software. Um, companies come and go. And it's quite striking to look at the composition um, of, you can look at this generally, of course, in respect of the biggest 500 companies in the US. You know, if you look at it 100 years ago and today, effectively, I think there's two or three companies that, were, that would be in both lists. Um, it's even more pronounced on, on NASDAQ, uh, which is kind of the, the, the tech-heavy uh, listing market for software companies, as you probably know. The, the turnover of companies is very significant. And I guess there's a couple of things that are surprising about, about the, the profile of the the structure of the software industry. The first is like there aren't that many actually big companies in it. Uh, and I, I'm going to get the number wrong here, but it's, there's about seven or eight software companies. They're obviously bigger hardware companies. There are about seven or eight software companies who do over a billion dollars in revenue. And that's surprisingly a surprisingly small number. And everyone's heard of Oracle, everyone's heard of Microsoft, everyone's heard of Google. You might have heard of Adobe, uh, you'll have heard of SAP. But actually, you know, below that, um, it tails off quite quickly. Um, and what you have below that level of kind of, you know, Behemoth is this much larger community and set of kind of mid-sized companies who range from, let's say, 10 million to maybe 500 million dollars in annual revenues. I guess what's interesting about software companies is that they can and do come and go very quickly because you know software uh, sort of trends come and go very quickly. And it's kind of the thing that happens to most software companies is that they, they innovate, they succeed, they grow, they expand, and then something different comes along which displaces them. 
and they fail to react to that successfully and, and they get displaced and eventually kind of they wither and die. And that's just the nature of the life cycle. And then a lot of software company management, at least in my experience, is first you're trying to catch the wave on the way up because if you miss that, <laughs> you know, all bets are off. But secondly, it's then a, a futile period of trying to avoid the, the inevitable kind of uh, in, empirical decline. And that's, that's just the way the industry is. And, you know, most software companies beyond a certain size are kind of struggling trying to spot the next competitor, trying to avoid being sort of uh, displaced or commoditized by Facebook or, or, or by Twitter or whatever the next thing along is. So, you know, thinking about that, I think, more, more, more usefully, the fact is that software companies are perennially being founded, perennially getting going, and there's always you know, a lot of opportunity to, um, to position yourself uh, inside kind of that, that growth space. And again, just to give a, a bit more background on my personal background and what my company now does, and um, you know, I know it was, it was a risky bet when I joined it. It was um, like it was, I think it was a 70 something employee, uh, kind of Henri Chris Horn, and Sean Baker, and Colin Newman uh, had set it up together. And I remember Henri describing how he decided to join, and he was going, "Mad, it's better than lecture." <laughs> so, uh, so Henri's never, never actually had a real job. He was, he ended up as the CTO of Iona, and uh, you know, had a, had a long run there. But after that, we kind of got bored, and um, so we set up a company called Cape Clear in 1999. And now, you know. The, the good thing about this recession, from my point of view here, is that it's not actually a software recession. I think you probably hear it from the guys here that um, you know, um, there was a very bad period for the technology industry around sort of the early 2000s, 2001, 2002. So we got Cape Deer going in 1999, and then um, pretty much sort of then faced into a, a software nuclear winter, um, where you know there, there was a general uh, recession on post 9/11, um, and you know nobody was spending, and a lot of smaller software companies would depend quite heavily. On American corporate business, so um, you know, we were investing heavily at the time in North America. And I remember I was actually sitting on a plane on the runway at San Diego Airport at 10 to 6 uh, Pacific time on September 11, 2001, and the plane didn't take off. And kind of, and I, you know, I could literally chart the like, the most difficult professional three or four years I had were subsequent to that, as we essentially tried to you know grow a business in the face of what was, as I said, a, kind of a, a nuclear winter uh, kind of in, in, in North American business spending. Uh, we were founded around the same time as Google, <laughs> but you've heard of them. You probably have a 